Hello and welcome to Patrick's Models and Transport. So, we're actually going to finally get round to doing the maintenance to the Pico BR64 tank locomotive that I bought well, some time ago. I bought it second hand on Vinted and uh, I've been meaning to take it out and we, we, ha we had a preview video of it showing that it actually works and uh, I never ever got around to, to actually opening up <coughs> and uh, and seeing and doing the and, and doing the and doing the servicing excuse me okay <coughs> so we're here fully equipped of locomotive in its box lighter fluids a stock of uh, cotton buds toothpicks and other useful things we'll just put them out of view i don't think you really need to see them all the time and uh, we can commence being very formal okay we're filming this is how i check what's happening at the other side of the camera this is an old fiat uno rear view mirror where the anti-glaring lever is broken i don't even have a fiat uno anymore i had two i've had i've I've had two Fiat Unos, I, so I can say I, I drove two Fiat Unos into the ground. <laughs> okay, but I still have a mirror. Okay, so let's begin. You can see that I have some very interesting markers so that I know that I'm in camera. Ah, very well, so let's pop this out of the box. I really like the boxes of these East German locomotives, very basic very rough and ready and uh, the external shell is pretty bad condition but I actually restored it a bit with some glued it together with some paper yes I'll put that out of the road and here's the actual protect the actual box and here's our locomotive we can fish it out of the box okay let's pop that there let's keep this out of the road let's check that we can see everything okay there you go very well everything is in view maybe a spot more light right all systems go okay so this is a locomotive <clears throat> this locomotive the br64 has the exact same chassis and mechanism as the br65 the green one the one that we're in the the saxon local the saxon uh, 262 that uh, we've seen in previous videos which is a saxon locomotive saxon state railways which was then handed over to france to the etat lines the state french state lines as war reparations after the armistice of the 11th of november 1918 so the armistice locomotives and uh well, well during this series of videos because we'll do more videos on this uh, we'll actually compare the two side by side but we've already seen them in the in uh in a previous um, i see i've not made my mind out up how how we're actually going to do this so to open this locomotive i like to ad lib i like to go along go along as i as i right i don't really follow a script i have a general idea in my mind okay so as we saw in a previous video on this locomotive the locomotive is pretty dirty wheels it's needing a oh, very dirty front wheel there going back to the video i posted yesterday on dirty wheels we can see that the driving axles which pick up electricity this is uh, this locomotive picks up electricity from all from all um all uh, uh all, all from the three axle from the these three axles here but uh, the chassis here con conducts electricity so if i don't remember badly maybe i don't really know there could be there's also some picking up not really no no these don't the front wheels don't pick up they don't pick up my my impression that they're just but if you touch put connect a controller here this is actually live huh? these wheels the front the front pony truck and rear pony truck 
the front don't, don't pick up anything. You can see that these are quite clean because these are driving wheels. Instead, the gunk is here on, on the non-conductive and non-driving wheels. Okay, so the locomotive has got dirty wheels, very oxidized pickup contacts, which I will clean with lighter fluid. I'm not planning to dismantle and to polish things with... Uh, I could use Duraglit. I could even use a spot of Duraglit, but let's see. Let's see how things are. The locomotive actually works, works well. So if we go, if we connect a nine volt battery to it. It's noisy because it needs lubrication, but it works. We'll also be opening the motor because the motor, the mo the commutator of the motor will be really dirty, and we can see that the headlights also work. This 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 locomotive has got headlights. It's not got the usual. It's got bulbs. It's not got the usual Pico, um, Pico uh, rubies, I call them, you know, that just catch a light. It's actually a very, very good solution. I'm repeating myself. Anyway, refer to the previous video. I'll put the link in the description box when I eventually load this. We'll get the, the link in the description box to the previous video I did. So let's begin. We don't need this for the moment. We need to open take the body off the locomotive. To take the body off the locomotive, there's one screw here on one of the domes. So it's a very simple operation. We just open one screw. By opening this one screw, the body lifts off. Right. It should be very, should be nearly there. I know, I know what to expect under here because I already did the maintenance to the BR75. So that's the screw out. Let's get a small container to avoid losing things. I'll just put it in there. I use these when I'm painting. And now we can actually take the body off. Is it going to come? Should lift out. It's coming. It's a bit stiff. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, gently. I don't remember, do I have any other screws? No, no, this just lifts out one shot. Are you coming or are you not coming? Ah, here we go. Aye, aye, this has been, this has been in a dirty place. This has been in some, oh, the bulb, the, one of the bulbs came out. How come that, that how come that popped out? How come, how, ah, because it catches in there. I just come came out. That was just caught inside. Perfect. Ooh, this has been in a very dirty, damp cellar. By the look of it, by the look of it, this has been in a in a damp dungeon. Let's pop this bulb back in and see that everything's okay and it's actually working. Now that it came out of play of of its seat. You can find all the bulbs on it. If something fuses, it's not really a problem. Oh, let's see. If you go back in there, my pal. Let's see what's going on. I definitely might take the bulbs out to give it a good... To give it a really good... A good clean... Oh, yes. Bulbs are working. No problem. I think we're going to take them out because they are really... It really looks as if they are, everything is very, very, very dirty. Very, very, very oxidized. This has been in some, it smells damp as well, huh? It really smells of humidity. This has been in a cellar. There's a slight musty. Oh, oh, it smells of humidity. This doesn't have smell of humidity. This is also not smelling well. Plastic's okay. The, the, there is, see here we've got kind of cork. We've got cork insulation here. Very interesting to see the all the mechanism on these. Cork insulation. We have Bakelite. Bakelite insulator here as well. These are the suppressors. Two suppressors to not disturb radio and TV. That screw... This is a screw for releasing the motor. The motor 
is held in position by two screws. Now, let's see if I remember. A lower screw under here. You open that screw and you can lift the motor out. And then you can disconnect it from up here. You take the thing out. Now, I'm trying to remember. I have to sort of. I'll have to look through before opening the motor. I'll look through the photographs I did of the BR seventy five, and uh, and that that way I'm sure I don't do anything daft. In particular, if I do it on video, I don't want to do anything daft on video. That might not be a good idea. <laughs> okay, compared to the BR seventy five. Sorry, the BR seventy five. Yes, there are some diff minor differences. The BR, this has got a lead weight, a solid lead weight here in the center of the, sash, of the chassis, of the two chassis elements. The BR75 has got a series of metal plates, like a, a bunch of metal plates. It doesn't have a solid lead weight. This is a solid lead weight. So that's a little, that's a, that's a, a different, a slight difference in manufacturing technique. It doesn't have light, it doesn't have uh, bulbs. It doesn't have electric lighting. Here we can see in here. I hope you can see. Let's see if you can see. I think you can. I'm going to come towards the camera. We can see that the, the worm drive is all gunked up with nasty, very, very old grease. That's this is never. I don't think this is ever. Maybe it has been. It looks like dried up lithium grease as well. There's some traces of white. Let's see what smell it has. Humidity. <laughs> the only smell I smell here is humidity. Ugh. Terrible. Not one of my favourite smells. Humidity. Damp. Damp. The stink of damp. Okay, so I have to remember how this here was fitted. How the motor was fitted in position. Because the motor... Okay, so on this locomotive here... On the BR-75, there was a small strip of paper insulating the motor. Probably we'll find it even in here, because the motor, the motor housing here of the ring field motor goes down and it comes close to the chassis, chassis uh, uh, members here. And, uh, and there's a small bit of paper to insulate it which I suppose we'll have here as well. Here's the brush housings. These are the springs with the brush. You have the housings for the brushes. The brushes have got like a V, a V-shaped notch at the back to hold them in position. Very good quality motor, this. Really, this is a very good quality motor. Very good, very good. Three pole motor, but really very, very good. The motor is held in position by, there's a screw up here. And I can't, the screw under there. I have to open that. Yes, that's the one I have to open to release the motor. And the motor is, is not connected by... There are no cables that connect the motor. The motor, these... This is an insulated Bakelite plate that holds all the contacts. And here there are two spring-loaded copper brackets. And... They come. They come in contact. They touch the the brush springs here, and that gives conductivity. So there are no cables. You don't have to desolder anything here. It's fantastic. Really a very very good design. And this here just lifts out completely, and it's held in position. On the BR seventy five, I think this is a bit. This is more recent than the BR seventy five. There was a weak point on the BR seventy five. Uh, there was there's a kind of plastic collar here that catches into these two into these notches and when I bought the BR75 it was jammed it was mechanism was jammed and why was it jammed some foreign body by previous owners had fallen in the mechanism and the locomotive had been used the jam mechanism the force the torque of the motor and of the wheels buckled the motor up and broken 
the little plastic notches of the collar to fit in here on the BR75. BR64, the system has been improved. This weak point has been eliminated. And uh, what I had to do, I didn't do, I wasn't doing videos then, but I have all the photographs. I managed to glue the little notches back on using Tamiya uh, modeling cement. And uh, the type of plastic, each German plastic was compatible, so it dissolved, it melted and positioned perfectly, and it's never missed a beat since. So here we'll have to have a good look. I'll have a good look off camera before I go and open things, not to do anything daft. And, uh, and then we'll actually maybe slacken it. Let's have a look. I'm a bit indecided because I don't want to make it. It's the same motor, the same everything, but it's a slightly updated version. And we can see the motor here. Watch, this is there. Well, you can see. Contacts. Everything is very, very dirty here. Huh? Everything is very, very dirty. Everything's very oxidized. There's a smell of not very clean motor. Let's see here what we can do. Okay, let's have a look. I'm trying to remember how I did this. There's that, then there's another plate under there. Yep, that's it. I can see it. Okay, that's how it is. So we have to open this up, open this screw. Then we have to, this here, li the motor lifts up. This screw, the lower screw, holds the motor in position. And that lifts it up. And then to remove the motor, this to open the motor, you open the upper screw. So first we, first we have to take this screw out, this will release the motor from the chassis, and then lift it out. Okay, anyway, for the moment, I'm not going on because it's a bit late now, and I don't want to, I don't want to do things, then I have to interrupt them because I have to go to my bed and things like that, so there's no point in, it's a more complex job, we don't want to make any mistakes. What I will do now, I'll do an important thing. I'll remove the bulbs, take the bulbs out, and we'll, these bulbs will have to give them a really good clean because they're very, very, very oxidized. We'll be cleaning these with lighter fluid, lighter fluid, and even rubbing the contacts on a bit of paper. The, these need attention, so then we'll have to clean these contacts here. We'll have to take. Oh, but I think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to be taking the front, the front and rear and rear uh, wheels off because it's the best thing to do when you're working. We'll just do that right now. Let's dismantle the locomotive. We can actually just pop it there like that. It doesn't disturb anybody. Let's get a container to put these things in because we do not want things like disappearing. That would be very, very annoying. So we'll just put them in this large container here. Okay, so screws and things go in the big one, bulbs go in the wee one. And then it can all go in together. When you do maintenance to a locomotive, when you do such a job, I mean, of course, this is, I think something it's, it's, you understand it on your own and oh, it's a bit of a hot air just saying so it's always better to take your time take your time and don't do a rush job because if you do a rush job then the next thing you know you won't know what goes where and and things will be going in a very bad way and I've uh, so the BR-75 with the same mechanism, that had jammed and whoever 
whoever damaged it didn't know how to repair it so it ended up eventually sold for a good price as well so that was my gain the um, the Jouef 140C231 locomotive the tender locomotive the one I have to put the change one of the change the the, the traction tires on that had also been manhandled in the in the valve gear something had been taken off and not reassembled properly and the contacts had not been the wheel set had been put in properly it wasn't picking up from the front axle and things like that and it took some time so these kind of repair botched repair jobs by you know the important thing is to have a look and nowadays it's so easy to do things because we have there we go we have the we have mobile phones we can photograph what we want so this is the broken this is the 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 bent axe the bent uh, it's landed on the floor sometime in its career so what i'm going to do i'm going to bend with a pair of pliers i'm going to bend these out and we'll just be we'll just couple up using the loop which is okay it'll work anyway you can see the complexity of this part and you can see that this also conducts electricity there's a contact spring here there's a contact here and this just hitches on very nicely like that like that it's just very 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 love very nice design very sophisticated design that goes in there like that and then it's held in position by this wee screw which has got the collar on it if you can see that there's a collar so that it swivels properly so we'll just pop that in there this is the rear axle i don't want because then these things here these things here tend to come apart and i don't want to mix parts so what i'm going to do now i don't want things getting mixed up because i'm going to take the front set of wheels off as well so i'm just going to do this to make sure they then stay separate a twiddler i call these twiddlers there's going to be another name wire tie cable tie things it's twiddler from something i think from a controller so let's do the front as well i'm just checking that i'm in camera so you're not seeing me maneuvering screwdrivers in thin air because that would be a pretty daft thing to do on my behalf and we can open the front as well oh we can see this has been in in, in, in the damp oh let's get a pair of tweezers this is more, more than this is not humidity this is paint this is this green paint this is a guarantee this is a seal this is to show that the locomotive is now demonstrate that the locomotive has never been opened i don't really know if this has never been opened this is a good question we'll see by the state of the commutator and the state of the brushes if this has been opened or not opened the brushes i think won't be, i'm very curious i'm very curious to see the the br75 over there practically never it was br brand new and it was just damaged and that was that okay so that can go in there let's take the front truck off as well same system same design different hook this the front does not have a loop it's just got the hook it's a, a smaller and uh, less conspicuous hook you can see that there's traces of rust on here because this has been left in a damp cellar so we'll just take another the other side of the twiddler as i call them and just wrap that around like that and that way we have the front one and the back one separate they reunite that way that's them put them away tidily pop them in there and they won't come to any harm so now we have the chassis devoid of of non-driving wheels and uh, we can actually start thinking about about doing the rest of the work so i'm going to look through my photographs before because i can't remember everything by heart as far as i remember going back a few months now because i've had the br75 for some time i have to to release the motor from the chassis with this screw 
then it all lifts off and then after you open this shorter screw this is a longer screw you, you open this shorter screw here and you take the brush housing off and you have access to the commutator and then you can clean the commutator clean put the put the brushes in some and some uh, lighter fluid etc 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 and get things on i'm very curious to see this this is this intrigues me because i was expecting to find the same the same color system but it really doesn't seem it doesn't doesn't even seem this this kind of color system that actually covered part of the gear of the worm gear i was expecting to find it in here but it doesn't even look as if it's actually it's missing it's not something that you know isn't here because the locomotive was modified and altered and uh, and uh, whoever reassembled it didn't bother putting it back in because this is really solid it's not moving anywhere so this is held in position by the screw down here but we're gonna have to have a good look at that and i want to check my i want to check my photographs and uh, once we do this job you know, once i get a new battery for the mobile for the for my digital camera and i'll actually start filming with that I'll do a comparative, comparative uh, video of photographs, stills, with the BR, with the BR uh, sixty four, and the BR seventy five, to show the differences. Okay, so I think that's all for the moment, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Stay tuned, and we'll be continuing working on this in the next in the next weeks. To get this very very beautiful model back to back in service because it's really nice it's a very very fine model and if i remember bad if i don't remember badly now i should be able to yep i can actually prize this out this will be another thing i'll do now that i've taken these two screws this is a base plate and this lifts out and we have access to the gears but we'll do that this have to pop a, 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 a a straight screwdriver in here you can see that there's a if I remember, don't remember badly it's the same so it's symmetrical but it's always good never trust something that looks symmetrical something that's been fitted onto a model for 30 years because then you'll think ah oh, it fits either way then you put it in and you see that it doesn't want to fit either way because it's been pressed in position for such a long time that it's taken a certain shape, even if this is metal and this is pretty thick metal as well. So the smartest thing to do is to get a marker pen, even a pencil would do, but a marker pen is more permanent. And this is a very good marker pen, this writes on glass. Let's see if it's well okay perfect we just take a marker pen and we just do a very simple thing we draw a wee arrow if it's wanting to write come on if you're wanting to write and we draw a wee arrow like that that's forward so we know that when we will fit the base plate back in it goes forward arrow and that's 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 the original position not to make a mistake and then put it in the other way around and then maybe it doesn't want to go in it doesn't want to tighten etc 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 that's the last thing you want to do you don't want to make a mess just because you didn't do a marking no and the same thing because even the motor the bell housing of the motor has the same is uh, symmetrical but it's always better to respect the position that it's been fitted in for around maybe three, maybe even four decades, because this is an old model. So it's always better to make a wee mark. And I'm just going to write here a, a letter T. T for top. There we go. T for top. That way I know. That this is a top i believe you put an arrow here but that's absolutely clear you can't make you can't you can't make a mistake i can even maybe do a wee arrow right here like that just to, just in case i forget and a drawing as my grandfather used to say 
a drawing saves a lot of words and uh, uh, in this case here it's not only words but it's even potential swear words <laughs> which we don't say on, on, on video and I'm not wanting to have to edit things with a lot of beeps so uh, you want right there's a wee arrow up there perfect there we go deeper top and the wee arrow that way when I take that off I'll know exactly what way to put the thing back on again not to have surprises okay so that's enough for this video thanks for viewing and uh, if you have ever dismantled any pico locomotives or uh, uh, in this case we're talking about pico locomotives if you've ever had to deal with particularly oxidized and damp locomotives but this is a testimony to the excellence of the mechanism that this works despite the humidity despite the oxidation despite the ancient grease inside it and we'll have to see what the state of the commutator is this is a very good locomotive this is a very good mechanism absolutely hats off to pico feb to the east german model train factory absolutely beautiful 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 locomotives i really like them they're very very good these are a bit noisy yeah they're a bit on the noisy side these the, the mechanism is not because there are gears to each axle it's over engineered it's german of course it has it had to it had to be over engineered it couldn't have been under engineered as a german locomotive a german model train but by gum if they work that's the thing over engineered but very 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 efficient nothing is left to chance there's, a, there's hair there there's dirt of all types of geez oh it's an absolute it's an absolute midden as we say it's a midden a midden ah. okay very well so enjoyed the video you can give us a like it's always very useful and uh, you can subscribe to the channel and uh, and also click the notification bell and thank you for viewing and cheerio and see you next time